Hello, welcome, Devil Sniper here, and today we are going to be watching episode number 37 of our career mode with West Ham United. We're going to start off with the FA Cup game against Arsenal, away to Arsenal at the Emirates Stadium in the Emirates FA Cup. Hopefully we can build upon the positivity of the last two games where we had a decent victory against Southampton, winning 2-0. And of course, that 3-1 victory against West Bromwich Albion has really set us up for this FA Cup game. Hopefully we can do the business against Arsenal and progress further into the tournament because that is one of our actual commitments from the board is to objectives from the board I should say to get further forward there's still some decent sides in there there's some troublesome sides as well in there hopefully we could do the business against Arsenal not need to go to a replay like we did against Fulham that was a disappointing game going to a replay against Fulham was not good of course we then beat Norwich City I think it was in the, the, the round after that that's where Simone Zaza picked up that nasty injury which was a great shame especially when he came off the back of the the game against Middlesbrough where he scored a hat-trick which was fantastic and that really did put a lot of, little bit of a dent into his season, to be fair. Just finding his feet and when he goes and gets injured, which is, uh, I guess, one of those things. But it is Arsenal to kick off from left to right as Koscielny in the centre of the park feeds the ball into Oxley chamberlain Chamberlain just comes back inside into Giroud. Giroud plays a nice little one-two, picks the ball up again, plays it into Santi Cazula, looking reminiscent of Arsenal when they took a lead 1-0 against West Ham in the previous game. And that's a bit of a dive in. Santi Cazula has time. Santi Cazula has space. He feeds it into Giroud. Left foot shot, bottom corner what can I say oh my god some of the worst defending I think I've done in this career mode so far it really really was frustrating I don't know why I dived in I really don't know why I dived in I just dived in like an absolute lunatic Kazula does has done this so many times in the previous game where he'll just stand off and sort of tease you into him and you know he's going to go round you but I just decided as normal just to take the bait and try and go in hard on him and of course it did not come off <laughs> in any way shape or form and puts us 1-0 down but it is Lanzini with a beautiful run cutting the ball inside of him plays the ball outside into Andre Ayew but the story of the first half the resilient Arsenal fullback Kieran Gibbs just blocks it all Arsenal have been phenomenal in this first half and it has to be said West Ham have just not been in the races they have just not looked their normal selves but it is Lanzini on the ball playing into Fletcher Fletcher into Pedro Pedro into the box Pedro Pedro into the top corner. As soon as we say West Ham aren't playing well, they go and slot the ball in to make it 1-1 after 42 minutes. And it was a fantastic run from Pedro from deep. Absolutely beautiful. Cubis playing the original ball. Then Fletcher holding the ball up, playing a good target man role. Just moves off his defender. Plays the ball into Pedro and Pedro does the rest. That was a, a real clinical finish from the young Spanish wizard at West Ham. I do love Pedro, I have to say. I don't know why I called him a wizard. He's not really a wizard. He's not really technically gifted. But to me, he's a little bit of a wizard. I really do like him. He has grown this season. And again, where did I come out of character in there doing the commentary? I don't know. But half-time, 1-1. And I've got to say, that goal from Pedro was brilliant. One of the things I have found in this FIFA is players do make those deep line runs. Anyway... I will stop gabbling rubbish at you and we'll kick off the second half and hopefully we can uh, pick up the much needed victory as it is West Ham to kick off from left to right. But it is Arsenal on attack. Kazula, Giroud, Kazula, Giroud. But it's Collins being big and strong, taking Giroud on. Giroud manages to get the shot off, but the, the presence of the ginger Pele was enough to put him off. But it is Andre Ayew down the right-hand side, being monitored by Kieran Giz. Has to come back side because he's been doubled up upon. Passes the ball inside to Arbaloa. Arbaloa onto Cubis. Cubis has time. Cubis has space. He plays it into Arthur. Arthur back to Cubis. Cubis just knocks the ball back inside to Emil Fernandez. He has time. He has space. He has a shot. And it's straight down the throat of Petr Cech, unfortunately. The West Ham faithful have been in great voice. Even though the game has not been the finest from the West Ham side, the West Ham faithful away from home have been absolutely fantastic. And it looks like Giroud has gone off for Welbeck. There can't be that much time left in this 1-1 game at the moment. As it is, Pedro picking up the ball. And no, there we go. The referee has concluded the game. It will finish. Arsenal 1, West Ham 1. Not the greatest of FA Cup games. And we can see there's still a lot of big teams. I mean, Chelsea have just walked through theirs, which is uh, no surprise, to be honest. And we have some good news. Lanzini has accepted his contract, which is fantastic. And of course... Young Cubist comes to me and says, thank you for the amount of playing time I'm getting. You're more than welcome, young man. I, I really do believe he's going to be a sensational player. We picked up a few squid from the FA Cup game, and perhaps we can invest that into some much-needed Jaffa cakes and tea bags 
Oh, yes, baby. The next game up, of course, is the league game against Crystal Palace. We really, really need to bounce back after that dismal 1-1 draw against Arsenal. And we need to bounce back to pick up our league form. But it's going to be strength versus strength. Goals allowed, 18 for West Ham. Goals scored, 40 by Crystal Palace in the Premier League. That is two of the best records. Unbelievable. This has got nil-nil written all over it. Hopefully it won't be nil-nil, but we need to pick up a real positive result. If we win this game today, that will be nine points from a possible nine in league games in February, which will be fantastic. Maximum points, considering how we've done in some previous months. We've had some really, really good months. We've had a couple of, what we how would we describe them? Dodgy to awful months. And then we've picked ourselves back up. You know, we were good in December. We were good in January. And we're building upon that. Getting nine points or fulfilling our dream of getting maximum points in February would be fantastic and really puts us in a, with a shout of winning that Premier League title or at least staying in the top three at least, which would be fantastic. That aside, it is Faguli on the ball, right-hand side. Plays a delightful ball into Byram. Byram majestically marauding forward. Tries to cross, but it is cut out by the Crystal Palace defender. It was a, a look of a good move, but unfortunately just couldn't execute a cross. But it is Palace with a cross into Delaney. Delaney turns. Delaney comes back inside. Faguli man marking him. Faguli allows him time and space. Into Christian Bekteke. Flicks it into the back post. Oh my days. It's just gone past the post. A fantastic header. It looked like Creswell just done enough as Creswell. Speaking of him, cuts inside. Plays the ball into Antonio, but it doesn't go through to him, unfortunately. It's cut out and the referee does conclude the first half. It's been a pretty good first half, but you can tell that... Both teams are a little bit standoffish. They don't want to concede silly goals. More Crystal Palace don't want to see concede silly goals because they know that West Ham are extremely tight at the back. But it's Palace to kick off the second half. They're looking bright. Zaza down the right-hand side. Being marked by Creswell. Creswell doing a great job. But Zaza gets the cross in. Kabai at the back post. And Randolph comes up with a huge save. The first real opportunity that Palace have created is Dimitri Payet. Marauds forward. Waving his magic wand. Plays the ball back into Norvet. Norvet into Jimenez. Jimenez into Faguli. Oh, what a save from Mandanda. Absolutely beautiful football from West Ham. The Claret and Blue are playing like the Barcelona of East London. A great crossing. Comes out. Kabai has it. Chips his own. And he's a chips his own keeper. That's unbelievable. Dimitri Payet is celebrating. Did Ogbonna get a foot to that? Or was that all? Johan Kabai. The ball was headed out. It looked like Kabai chested it. I can't tell if, if Ogbonna got his foot there or if it's actually Johan Kabai. Mandanda comes off his line, marauding forward towards the penalty spot. And it goes over him and into an empty net. We've got to have a look at that as a close-up. A fantastic defensive header. You can see Ogbonna coming and challenging Kabai. Kabai. Leaps like a gazelle. Takes it on his chest. The ball comes down. Does Ogbonna. He goes to move his foot. No, he doesn't. It is Johan Kabai. He has just chipped his goalkeeper from at least 35, 37 yards. Unbelievable. And what an awful way for West Ham to take the lead. I'm sure the West Ham faithful will be absolutely delighted with the goal they've scored. But I'm sure Crystal Palace will be absolutely bewildered. But it is... Ledley, left foot, top corner, 1-1. One, one. As soon as West Ham take the lead, Crystal Palace have striked back and they're showing why they've scored 40 goals. The time, the space allowed to Ledley after the rash tackle by Mark Noble was just unbelievable. And he didn't hesitate in shooting and he smashed it in that top left-hand corner. A fantastic goal by Ledley, but it is Faguli right-hand side after the Dimitri Payet was taken out. Faguli drifting into the centre of the buck. Plays into Raul Jimenez. Jimenez with time. Jimenez with space. Plays a delightful ball to Dimitri. Oh, he's made a 2-1. Absolutely fantastic goal from Dimitri Payet from the kickoff. Beautiful play. Dimitri was taken out. Faguli cuts inside. He knocks it into Raul Jimenez. He has time. He has space. Feeds the ball into the marauding run of Dimitri Payet and that man will not miss. He is having the season of his life. Absolutely fantastic play from West Ham. They're showing their pure dominance. And we know they are solid at the back. But it is Palace with a free kick. Kabai! Oh, it's just gone over the bar. Randolph had no worries there. It's a great shame. Kabai would have liked to have set the record straight after that. Bizarro goal he scored from at least 35 yards was unbelievable. But West Ham giving the ball away slobbily. But Randolph picks the ball up. 
Sprays it straight out to Mark Noble. Noble with the first touch. Plays it into Dimitri. Dimitri with a nice little turn. Plays the ball into Nordvet. Nordvet marauding forward into Jimenez. Jimenez has time. He knocks it into Faguli. West Ham are bobbing forward. Faguli into his Jimenez. Jimenez with a beautiful touch. Can this be his first goal? Jimenez has made it. They won. What a beautiful goal. The touch by Raul Jimenez there was just sensational. The Mexican is showing the pure class and quality and the reason why West Ham invested 17.5 million in him and the finish was there to match. But it's been one hell of a game and the referee does conclude the game. What an unbelievable game. West Ham United 3, Crystal Palace 1 and one of the most bizarre own goals I think we've ever seen in Premier League history and Premier League matches. Unbelievable. So, of course, we're going to have a quick look at a little bit of training, see which players I'm training up. We haven't done this for a little while. I don't want to always do it, to be honest. You don't need to see this, uh, this boring section. But, my God, have you ever seen a more bizarre own goal on FIFA? I mean, let's be honest. I'll tell you what. If we were attacking and we chested it and we dinked it over the keeper from, like, 35 yards... It would be goal of the season without a shadow of a doubt. What a shame for Johan Kabay. It's actually, actually a player I really do like. I've liked him for a long, long time. What a shame for him to concede such a bizarre goal. Man of match against Arsenal was uh, Pedro. And man of match against Crystal Palace has to be Dimitri Payet. He just ran the show as normal. He is phenomenal. And next up, of course, is Aston Villa in the EFL Cup Final. Bring on that silverware. Hopefully we can deliver it and I will catch you next time.